The war in the Middle East, meanwhile, continues to race on. Israel has turned its focus from Gaza to Lebanon, carrying out relentless attacks on allies of its enemy number one, which is Iran. In the last two weeks, Israel has launched a wave of airstrikes in Lebanon that has killed more than a thousand civilians. It has also dealt a mortal blow to the Hezbollah, whose entire top command, including its leader, Hassan Nasrallah, have been eliminated. Today, once again, an Israeli airstrike pierced through Lebanon's capital, Beirut. Israel once again said it is mulling a ground invasion of Lebanon. Israel's Prime Minister is saying a new balance of power is being created in the Middle East with its offensive and targeted killings. But ladies and gentlemen, here's the thing. History teaches us to be skeptical. In 1982, the US invaded Lebanon and led to the birth of the Hezbollah. In 2003, our television sets, you remember, beamed the US, bombed the hell out of Iraq. Saddam Hussein was eliminated. But there was no flowering of liberal democracies in the region, if that was the hope. Then during the 2006 israel Hezbollah war, the U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice had grandly and famously said, we are witnessing the birth pangs of a new Middle East. But that is hardly how it panned out. So question is, is it too early to predict the end of the Hezbollah? I'm putting that question to my guest, Talmiz Ahmed. He's a career diplomat who has served extensively in the region and studies it closely. Thank you, sir, for coming all the way to the studio. First things first, since the Prime Minister has just had a call with his Israeli counterpart and the Prime Minister is saying that everything must be done to ensure peace, is India in a position to influence anything at all? Because Israel, by the looks of it, is not interested. I mean, when the Americans and the French were talking about ceasefire, Israel was happily bombing Lebanon. Are they really interested in peace? And can India do anything about it? Israel has no interest whatsoever in a ceasefire at this point. Mm. It has seen over the last year the international community do its best in terms of resolutions mm. at the United Nations, various inf international court of justice, OIC, Arab League, everybody. Nobody has been able to stop Israel. President Biden personally put his prestige on the line and announced a peace plan, calling it an Israeli peace plan. And Netanyahu said it is not our peace plan at all and we don't accept it. Hmm. This happened in May. In the month of August, again, there was a peace plan and Netanyahu shrugged it off. My sense is that Netanyahu has a, a two-point agenda. The first is personal and domestic. He is being criticized severely by the Israelis for the failure of 7th October. Correct. And he needs to atone for that. Correct. Plus he has the, corruption charges against him. Yes. Hmm. He has to kill these high profile people. Killing large numbers of Palestinians, 42,000, doesn't atone for that. Killing these high profile people whose names are well known in Israel. Basically, he is giving the message to his people that what I had, what I failed to do on 7th October, I have made up for that. Mm. And I have killed all these people. I have made you safer. Therefore, I am ready to be forgiven by you. This is the first point to be noted. The second is the regional scenario. Netanyahu's assessment is that he has never had such a golden opportunity to address simultaneously all the issues that have agitated Israel. Israel has been subjected to various plans, two-state solution, one-state solution, mm -hmm. uh, have this peace, as you remember, mm -hmm. Camp David won, Correct. Uh, and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, he feels, mm -hmm. this point, the, uh, the American administration totally paralyzed mm -hmm. in the throes of an election. He feels that this is the time to take out all his enemies. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hamas, Hezbollah. He is now desperately anxious for Iran to be pulled in. I was, that was my second question. Do you see that happening? Because the Wall Street Journal is reporting that 60 feet under the ground, in the bunker, where the Hezbollah chief was, there was a meeting of top commanders that were discussing how to retaliate. 
to Israel's airstrikes, given the fact that Iran is asking them to restrain themselves. Israel. Do you think, therefore, do you think that Iran, which is right now being led by a moderate president, will be pulled into this conflict? Because if they do, then God save us. What Netanyahu would like, as, a, as opposed to what he actually does, what he would like, is to kill a senior Iranian hmm. so that Iran is forced to enter war. See, Iran has been subjected to, to sanctions for 40 years. Hmm. It has a very poor conventional military force. Hmm. No match for the Israelis who have been backed by the Americans for the same 40-year period hmm. and given a state-of-the-art weaponry. So this is what he would like. But I think that wars are very unpleasant business, uncertain, you never know. You remember that there was the assassination in 1914 and you had a war for five years mm -hmm. that killed several million people. You never know which way wars will go. You can't be sure that 1967 can be repeated so easily. Therefore, I think that as of now, he has achieved what he would like to do, emasculated Hezbollah. Hezbollah is the principal enemy as far as Israel is concerned. In fact, an Israeli general once said that they are the, the Arab people closest to us in terms of discipline, in terms of commitment, etc. 